Hey y'all, I had a question from one of my static students who's taking the course online and he wanted to know how I'm going about solving my uh, equilibrium equations simultaneously. So I thought I would put together this video and kind of go over how I'm doing that. All right, so what you see here is we've got three equations. These are just from one of the equilibrium examples that I worked in class. So this is the sum of the forces in the x direction. Here's our equation for the y direction forces. And then this is the sum of moments equation. All right, so notice they're all set to zero here because it's equilibrium. So I'm gonna go through and show you how I would solve for the unknowns. And the unknowns in this problem, we got three of them. We have NA, NB, and NC, okay? So I wanna know what the values are for those three things. All right, now the way we're gonna do this is we're going to use the form AX equals B, all right? Now, A is gonna be a matrix of coefficients that are basically multiplied by our unknown. So this 0.5 or the negative 0.5, that's the coefficient for NC, all right? So all these little coefficients are gonna go in this matrix A. Matrix B over here on the right, that's going to consist of the numbers that are just by themselves, all right? So like 8.66. There's no variable next to that. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna move it to the right, okay? And then X is going to be a vector that has our unknowns in it. And I'll show you in a second what I mean. All right, so let's, let's do a generic example first and then we'll go back to this one. So let's say we have some system of equations that looks like this. We got A11 times X1 plus A12 X2 plus A13 X3 equals B1. All right, so that's the first equation. Then let's have an A21 X1 plus A22 X2 plus A23 X3, and that'll be equal to some value B2. And then finally, let's do a three by three here. We'll have an A31 X1 plus A32 X2 plus A33 X3 equals B3. All right, so this is just a generic set of equations, okay? And the Bs here, they could be zeros or they could be a non-zero value. They could be positive or negative. So now what we will do here is we're gonna form that matrix A right here. And basically we're gonna pull out these coefficients, all right? And one thing you need to notice is x1, x2, x3, they're all in the same order in all three of these equations, right? So notice the first variable is always x1, then we have x2, then we have x3, okay? So the x1, x2, x3, those are our unknowns in the equation. These little a's are the coefficients. So let's pull off the little a's and put them in this a matrix. So we got A11, A12, A13. Then let's move down to the second equation. We got A21, A22, A23, and then go down to the third equation. A31, A32, and A33. So this is matrix A. Now I'm gonna multiply that by this X matrix. So the X matrix, like I said earlier, consists of our unknowns. So our unknowns here are gonna be x1, x2, and x3. So let's create a column vector. We'll have x1, x2, and x3. And then finally we need matrix B. So that's basically just this right side. So B1, B2, B3. All right. Now if you look at this, if we do matrix multiplication, you'll see we get exactly what we had up above. All right, I would have A11 times X1 plus A12 times X2 plus A13 X3 equals B1. All right, because remember when you multiply matrices, you do the row and then the column. All right. So this is just a matrix way of writing these three equations. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing with ours. Now to solve for our unknowns, which are these, we would take the inverse of this matrix A and we're gonna multiply it by B. 
Okay, and then that's going to give me my values for x1, x2, and x3. Okay, so that's the general example here. Now let's apply it to this, and then we'll go through and I'll show you how to do it on the TI-84 calculator just so you can see the numbers and everything. Okay, so first thing you want to do when you're doing your equilibrium problems is you're going to have something that looks like this. What you want to do after you get those equations is we want to write it in a form like this. And when I say write it in this form, you want to make sure you have your unknown variables all in the same order. And we want to put the values like the 8.66 or this negative 5. We want to move that to the right hand side. Okay, the only thing on the left should be the terms that have our unknown variables in them. Everything else goes to the right. So that's going to be step one. All right, so let's do that with our equations. Okay, so 8.66 is going to go to the right, so we'll write that down in just a second. So we're going to start with negative NA plus NB minus 0.5 NC, and then we're moving 8.66 over, so it's going to become negative. All right. Now if we go to our second equation, notice the only unknown variable we have is NC. Okay, I want to write everything in the same order, so I'm going to leave some spaces here so it makes it obvious we don't have an NA or an NB in this equation. So we have 0.866, whoops, NC, and then I need to take this negative 5 and I need to move it to the right, so then it becomes positive. Next, let's come down to this one. Here I've got NB first and then I have NA. Well, I want to switch that order so I don't put it in the calculator wrong. So I get negative 5NA plus 1.732NB. I don't have an NC term, right? NC is nowhere in this equation, so let's leave a space there. And then the negative, or the 97.58, that's going to become negative when we move it to the right. Okay, so now we have that. So this is in the same form as this. So now we just need to write the matrix version. All right. So this is going to be a 3x3 three three matrix here. All you need to do now is go through and pull out your coefficients. Don't forget the negative signs. So here I'm going to have negative 1 from right here. This one is just a 1. Then I have negative 0.5. Then go down to the next row. I got zero and then zero and then positive 0.866. And then on the third row, I got negative five, 1.732. And then I don't have an NC term, so that goes to zero there. So this is matrix A. Now we're gonna do our little column vector that contains our unknowns. So that's going to have NA, NB, and NC. And then the right-hand side gives us B. So all you need to do for this one here, this vector, is basically just copy these numbers down in that same order. So negative 8.66, positive 5, and negative 97.58. All right, so this is matrix B, and this would be like our X. Whoops. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to find the inverse of this matrix and then we're going to multiply it by B. That's going to give me X. And to do that, we're going to go to the calculator. Okay, so this is the TI-84 calculator. Doing matrices in this calculator is kind of annoying, I think. The 89 is a lot easier to use, but but this is the one I have with me here, so that's what we'll use. Okay, so what you want to do, let's clear this out, is we're going to go to matrix. So see matrix is right here on this x to the negative 1 key. So we're going to do second matrix. And then we want to go to edit. All right, so let's go to edit. And what you want to do is you want to pick a number for one of the matrices. All right, 
I'm going to pick number one because I've already set this one up. And here is our matrix A. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. All right, now if you don't know how to do that, let's go back and I'll show you how to enter all this stuff. So let's pick one I haven't used before. Let's pick four here. All right, so notice D doesn't have the dimensions next to it. All right, whoa. So let's go to edit, and then I'm gonna hit four. Now I have a new matrix. First, you're gonna put in your dimensions. So rows go first. I have three rows here, right? One, two, three. And then I've got three columns. So do that. And notice, gives you a matrix. Now you're gonna go in, you're gonna enter all these values. All right, so enter the value for this top element and then hit enter, then just keep going. All right, so then we got negative 0.5, and then I got 0, 0, 0.866, I got negative 5, 1.732, and 0. Okay, so now we're done with this. So this is matrix D in my calculator. Okay, and then you can just get back out. And then I just went back to the matrix screen again. And now we need to enter matrix B. Okay, and I've already got matrix B created right here, but I'll show you how to do it down here on E on my calculator. All right, so let's go back to the edit right here. Just arrow over and then hit five because this one's empty. Now, what would be the dimensions of this one? It's going to be a three by one, right? Because we got three rows. So you got that. And now you need to enter your values. So negative 8.665 and negative 97.58. All right, and now you got that set up. So now we can go over here. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and now we need to do the inverse of A times B. All right, so let's get out of this matrix menu. So second and then quit. And then here we're back to that home screen. All right, so we got that. Now the way we're going to do the inverse, I don't know why I just left that screen. We don't need to do that. Let's go back to the matrix screen. And then we're going to hit the matrices that we need. All right, so my A and B are already the values that we need. So let's go ahead and use those. All right, so I'm going to have A. Now I need the inverse of A. So to get that, we're going to do this little caret symbol and then negative 1. And there is your inverse of A. Okay, so if we want to see what's to the right there, you can just arrow over. All right, so you can write down your values if you want. All right, I'll go ahead and write them down so we have them written here. So A inverse is going to be 0.5. Let's just say 0.53. Then we got 1.53. We got 0. And then we got negative 0 0.306, negative 0 0.883, 1.15. .1 and what else do we get? We got negative 0 0.306 again, negative 0 0.306 again, and then zero. All right, so that's A inverse right here. Okay, now I want to multiply this by this matrix B. Okay, so let's write that down. All right, so we're just gonna take this matrix, write it back down here. And then let's see what we get. All right, so here we have A inverse. We want to multiply that by B, so let's just hit the multiply. Now I need matrix B, so we're going to go back to matrix B like that. So now it'll be A inverse times B. And then look at what we got. So we have this little vector here, right? So we got 23.74. 12.19 and 5.77. All right, now what does that tell us? Well, these values are the values of these three unknowns. All right, so essentially, 
NA is equal to 23.74, NB is 12.19, and then NC is 5.77. So that gives you your unknowns. Okay. So once you have it all figured out, this is a lot easier to do than solving all of that by hand using algebra. Okay, the key thing you have to do though is remember your negative signs. A lot of people forget those. We don't want to forget the negative signs. And you have to make sure your variables are in the same order in each equation. Okay. And if you want to check that, you can always do the matrix multiplication. Make sure your left hand side checks out. All right, but that's kind of how you can go about um, solving simultaneous uh, equations, okay? And one more thing, the other calculators don't have that little matrix uh, menu that you have to use. Like the TI-89 is a lot easier to enter matrices in. So if you have one of those calculators and you're not sure how to enter matrices, you can just Google it and it's really easy to do. All right, so that's it guys. I will see y'all next time.